I didn't think I'd ever say this, but out of all sleep trackers I've tested, the Polar Verity Sense is the most accurate device so far compared to the gold standard of sleep stage tracking. However, you do need a special algorithm to actually get these results, which was developed at the University of Salzburg. In this overview graph right here of sleep stage tracking, it ends up all the way up here, seemingly even outperforming the Apple Watch, though just slightly. This algorithm is implemented in an app, which I tested in a sleep lab against the gold standard of sleep stage tracking, and it did really well. Though of course it still had some issues, as you'll see later. Also, though the Polar Verity Sense is quite inexpensive at about $90 or so, you do need a subscription to the app, which isn't cheap at about 20 to 25 euros a month. But you can judge for yourself if the performance is good enough for you. Let's get to it. Hello everyone, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. Now, as you might have noticed, I didn't mention the name of the app yet, and that's because it's called Nukua. I hope I pronounced it correctly, which is one of the worst names to advertise on radio, and apparently it means sleep in Finnish. And no, you're not crazy, the University of Salzburg is actually in Austria, not Finland. But okay, name aside, I was able to test this app because Professor Manuel Shibus, who developed this app, invited me to his sleep lab. They actually also published a scientific paper on the app, but I understood I needed to test it on myself so we can see if it's any good. So I proposed to sleep at the sleep lab for three nights and compare the app against the gold standard of sleep stage tracking, and to additionally test the app on Teresa and Chris for another three nights total. So in total, all combined, we have six nights of data to work with. In this video, I'll start looking at how the Nukua app performed on me, so we can also compare its performance to dozens of other devices. And of course, after that, we'll take a look at Teresa's and Chris's data. And finally, we'll take a look at this scientific paper that Professor Shibuz and his colleagues wrote. Now, what I think is important to mention is the thing that sets the Nukua app apart from the competition is the personalized sleep coaching, where they try at least to turn your smartphone and wearable into a home sleep lab. And I think this is where all companies should be headed and probably where they're headed, but I'll discuss that later in this video. Let's Let's first take a look at the data I actually gathered. Here you see an overview of the sleep test results on me. Now on top are the sleep stages as recorded by the polysonography device or PSG in short. And on the left are the sleep stages as recorded by the Nuka app. Now each column here sums to 100%, meaning that we can see what percentage of each of the sleep stages according to the PSG device was predicted as each sleep stage by Nukoa. If they perfectly agree, all values on the diagonal should be 100%. Now first of all, we see that about 92% of what was deep sleep according to the PSG device was also predicted as deep sleep by the app, so that's pretty good. And any confusion there was was with light sleep. Light sleep agreement is also pretty good at 84.5%, so really amongst the top out there. And any confusion in this case was mostly with deep sleep and REM sleep. Now REM sleep agreement is also pretty decent, though the worst out of all sleep stages at about 73%. And most confusion of REM sleep was with light sleep in this case, so that still doesn't look too bad. It's really some of the best out there. An awake time agreement is also pretty good. 83% of what the PSG device said was awake time was also predicted as awake time by the Nuko app. And most confusion was in this case with light sleep, which makes sense as light sleep is the closest sleep stage to being awake and also because most of your night is indeed light sleep. But let's take a look at the individual nights because this will show us in more detail what's going on. And here we see the first night. Now on top we have the sleep stages according to the PSG device with along the horizontal axis the clock time and my sleep stages along the vertical axis. And on the bottom we have a similar plot but now for the Nuko app. And in purple here I highlight the deep sleep as recorded by the PSG device. And as you can see there's generally a very good agreement between the PSG device and the Nukoa app. All of the deep sleep segments detected by the PSG device were also detected by Nukoa, though their duration varied a bit but this is still very good. And looking at this second night I want to show you, we see more or less the same thing, though in this case the app detected a bit of extra deep sleep, so an extra segment right here, and in general a bit more deep sleep. Now for this third night we see a bit of a mix. There's this deep sleep segment right here that was detected by PSG that was not detected by the Nuko app. And we also see some extra deep sleep detected right here and also near the end of the night right here. But overall the agreement is very good. We saw before that the Nuko app struggled most with REM sleep. And here I highlighted the REM sleep as detected by the PSG device in red. And as you can see, there's a reasonable agreement between the PSG device and the Nuko app. The Nuko app detected too little REM sleep for me. So these segments right here, for instance, were detected also this one right here and this one right here. But these two segments were missed. So this one right here and this one right here. 
Looking at this second night, we see a much better agreement. So for this night, the Nuco app detected more or less the same REM sleep as the PSG device. And that also means that for this night, at least, we would be able to see my sleep cycles based on just the data from the Nuco app. So you go through roughly four to six sleep cycles each night, each one starting with light sleep and deep sleep marked here in blue, and each one ending in REM sleep marked here in red. And as you can see, for this night, I had one, two, three, four sleep cycles, and all of these were also detected by the Nuco app. We basically see the same thing for the third night where all of the REM sleep segments detected by the PSG device were also detected by Nukua. Their duration varies a bit, but we would be able to see all of my sleep cycles based on just the data from the Nukua app. Only for the first night wouldn't this be possible. In terms of a wake detection marked here in green for the PSG device, there is some disagreement between the Nuco app and the PSG device, though it still looks pretty good. So for this night, it is pretty good at detecting when I fell asleep and when I woke up, and it also detects some of the same awake moments, though the PSG device seems to detect a few more short awake moments. So for instance, right here, but also right here and right here. Still, some of the shorter ones are detected by the Nuco app. Looking at this second night, we might even see a bit of a better agreement, so more of the short segments are also detected by the Nuco app. And for this third and final night, we see pretty much the same thing. There's a pretty good agreement in terms of awake detection. Many of the short awakenings are matching between the PSG device and the Nuco app, and this isn't what you see for many of the wearables I use. It could be that many manufacturers intentionally remove some of these shorter awake moments because they might not be as informative, or it might even make people a bit worried about how much they were awake. But still, overall, this looks good for the Nuco app. Now, I tested many other devices as well while I was sleeping at the sleep lab. So let's compare the performance of all these devices to the Nuco app. Now this graph right here shows you the agreement of different wearables with different PSG and EEG reference devices. Along the horizontal axis we have the average agreement over the individual sleep stages and on the vertical axis we have the agreement of the worst sleep stage. Now the better the agreement the more to the top right the device is, but I have to say this overview is slightly complicated because I use different reference devices. The devices marked in blue purple were tested against the polysonography device or PSG, so the same device we used in this video. The devices not marked in any color were tested against the Dream 2 EEG headband, a consumer quite accurate sleep stage tracker also based on brainwaves. And the devices marked in green were tested against the ZMAX EEG headband, a scientific sleep tracker. But what we can see that no matter what reference we use, the patterns are more or less the same. So Apple Watches are some of the best sleep trackers out there. Also the HSleep Pod 3 is really good. Also different Google brand devices, so both Fitbit and Pixel are really good. Aura rings are good sleep trackers and also the whoop strap isn't bad at all. And some of the worst sleep trackers out there are for instance the Mi Band but also different Huawei watches. So the patterns are more or less the same and we can see that the Nukua does really well. It's really the best sleep tracker out there tested against polysomnography. Though Apple watches are actually really close so I don't know if I would call the difference significant enough to have any real impact. But the general conclusion is that the Nukua app is doing really well in terms of sleep stage tracking. Now I have to say I use the Nukua app with the Verity Sense. But you can also use it with the Polar H10, which is an ECG chest strap. So this is a bit less comfortable because you have to wear it around your chest the whole night. But this even does it a bit better because the signal quality is even better for the heart rate. And if you plot the results for that, so I wore that at the same time as well, we can see that the Nuco app combined with the H10 did even a bit better than combined with the Verity Sense. Though the difference is marginal at best, I would say. It's much more comfortable to wear the Verity Sense, so I would prefer using that. Though you do get a slightly better performance with the H10. It's just because the signal quality is so much better for heart rate wearing the H10 than the Verity Sense. Still overall the performance is really good. So that performance looks pretty good on me. However, the next thing to check if the Nuqua app performs just as well on others. Luckily, Teresa was kind enough to travel with me to Salzburg and also spent two out of the three nights in the sleep lab and the one night that she couldn't join, Chris took over. So let's take a look at their results, which were surprisingly a bit different. However, first a quick side note. If you're interested in the latest updates on the wearables I'm testing, I'm planning to start back up with my newsletter and posting more off the cuff things on my Instagram and my YouTube Shorts channel. So if you're interested in any of those, those are linked below. Also, I'm trying to become part of the first people who receive smartwatches to review from companies like Garmin and Apple. And if you want to help me make that happen, it would really help if you like, subscribe and or comment. But of course, this is totally up to you. Now enough self-promotion, let's take a look at the performance on Chris and Teresa. And those results are displayed right here with the results for Teresa on the left and the results for Chris on the right. And as you can see, the general agreement is a bit worse than we saw on me, I would say, mostly for deep sleep. So we see that for Teresa, for the two nights that she tested it, 70% of what the PSG device said was deep sleep was also detected as deep sleep by the Nuco app. For Chris, who tested it just for one night, it was even lower at about 56%. 
And for both of them, most confusion was with light sleep in this case, or basically all of the confusion. Now for them, light sleep agreement was actually really good, where Teresa showed a 93% agreement and Chris a 96% agreement. REM sleep agreement was similar to mine, where for Teresa's it's a bit better at about an 80% agreement, and Chris has a bit worse at 71%, but I would say this is comparable to what we saw on me, and most confusion for both of them was with light sleep. But Chris actually also had a bit of confusion with awake time, and awake time detection for both of them was similar to what it was for me at about an 85 to 87% agreement, with again most confusion being with light sleep. So overall this still looks really good I would say, though for both of them the deep sleep agreement is a bit lower and especially for Chris it's really low at 56% though for him we just have a single night whereas for Teresa we have two nights and on me we had three nights. But let's quickly dive a bit into that deep sleep agreement to see what's going on. First looking at Chris's night right here we see that all of the deep sleep detected by the Nuco app was also detected by the PSG device but the Nuco app just didn't detect as much deep sleep so it detected too little deep sleep for Chris and detected more light sleep in this case in those moments. And if you look at Teresa's data we see first of all that for the first night it also misses some of the deep sleep so again all of the deep sleep that was detected by the new core app was deep sleep according to the psg device as you can see right here it just didn't detect enough of it and that's more or less also what we see for this second night right here though here it also detected a bit of extra deep sleep right here still overall there seems to be a slight underestimation in deep sleep for both of them so on Teresa and Chris, the Nuka app seems to perform a little bit worse than it did on me, at least in terms of deep sleep. The algorithm used by the Nuka app was designed not to favor light sleep, which sometimes happens when optimizing just for total sleep prediction because light sleep makes up more than half of your night. So theoretically, it shouldn't have been biased because of that, but we still see that slight drop in deep sleep agreement. Still overall, the performance is quite good. It just seems that in the case of Chris and Teresa, the algorithm still predicts too little deep sleep, whereas for me, that was a lot better. However, the biggest test of the Nuka app, at least in terms of number of people, was actually described in a scientific paper that Professor Shibuz and his colleagues wrote. So let's see what these results look like. They trained and tested the algorithm in 136 self-reported poor sleepers. Now here you can see the overall confusion matrix for those 136 people. It's similar to before but now based on the paper. First of all they say that 80% of what was deep sleep in the study according to the PSG device was also deep sleep according to the Nuco app. So that's somewhat similar to what we saw for me but a bit higher than we saw for Teresa and Chris. And most confusion in their case was also with light sleep. In their study light sleep agreement was also pretty good at about 86% with most being confused with deep sleep but also some REM and awake time. REM sleep agreement was quite good I would say, this is one of the difficult sleep stages for many watches and wearables and the REM sleep agreement in this case for the Nuco app is really good at 87% with most confusion being with light sleep and the wake time detection was also good at 78%, not as high as the other sleep stages in the study but still really good with most confusion of course being with light sleep. Now those were a lot of numbers so let's view all of these results at the same time so we get a better feeling for the consistency of these results. And here we have an overview of all confusion matrices at the same time, with on the top left the results on me, the top right the results for the study, the bottom left the results for Teresa, and the bottom right the results for Chris. Now as you can see, for some sleep stages I would say the agreement is pretty decent. So for instance awake time detection is more or less the same no matter which confusion matrix we look at. Now REM sleep detection is somewhat in the same range, so the study is doing significantly better than it did on me, Teresa and Chris. So for Teresa REM sleep detection was better than for me and Chris, but overall this is lower than they saw in the study. Now light sleep detection for me is similar to what they saw in the study but it's doing a bit better for Chris and Teresa. And deep sleep agreement is the one where we see the biggest differences. So for me deep sleep agreement was really good at 91%. For Teresa it's decent at 70%. So for Chris it's pretty bad at 56%. And this study is pretty decent at 80%. So I'm not sure what's going on here. In the study they do actually mention they have two different sleep stage tracking algorithms but I use the same one for all of these confusion matrices. So what could be the difference? Well first of all I believe they use something called cross validation to get these percentages right here for the study which means that even though the test sets are somewhat independent they're not as independent as the data sets you see right here for me, Teresa and Chris. 
risk. So that could be one of the reasons. Also, the study population is different. So in the study, they use poor sleepers, whereas I would classify me, Teresa, and Chris as normal sleepers. So maybe the optimization of the algorithm is not ideal. Still, no matter what confusion matrix you look at right here, the Nuco app is a good sleep stage tracker. I would say if we look at the results on me, those of the study, and potentially even those of Teresa, it's likely even slightly outperforming the Apple Watch. If you look at the results for Chris, they're a bit worse, I would say, than those of the Apple Watch. So maybe the truth is in the middle, though there does seem to be a tendency for it to be a bit better because only Chris is the outlier. These are just the results we got. I would say that the results on me, Teresa, and Chris are mostly independent, whereas the results for the study, of course, are not fully independent because there could be a financial incentive to produce better results. So I hope and expect that scientific integrity won out here. And overall, I would say the results look good for the Nuco app. So that generally looks pretty good for the Nuco app, I would say. And it shows pretty reliable sleep stage tracking using just a relatively affordable heart rate sensor. Now, as you saw, it did seem to perform a bit better on me than I did on Teresa and Chris, at least in terms of deep sleep, though we are dealing with a small sample size here. And in a large study, they came to be quite a bit better on average. Though, of course, also in that study, there would have been some people with better and worse results. And I'm not sure what the results were for, for instance, the worst tracked and the best tracked participant. Still, getting back to my results, the Nuco app seems to do slightly better than Apple Watches, though just marginally better. But where I think that the Nuco app sets itself apart is in terms of sleep coaching. But this is a feature I haven't extensively tested yet, so take this with a grain of salt. But this is exactly the thing I've said in previous videos is important. The app provides individualized, actionable advice based on your data. I'll start testing it over the next few weeks and I'll share those experiences with you once I have them. Still, I'm happy to see that companies are moving in this direction of actionable, individualized sleep coaching, which companies like Aura and Whoop, of course, already do to some degree at least. Now there's one thing we didn't discuss yet and that's the price. While the Polar Verde Sense and the Polar H10 as well are both relatively affordable devices, a subscription to Nukua is not cheap with a monthly flexible option of 25 euros or 20 euros per month if you pay for the whole year. Now I have to say this is the pricing I see right here in Europe, specifically Austria. And at the time of recording, I'm not sure in what countries Nukua is available and what the pricing is, but I'll ask and I'll put that information right here and also in the description below. So to summarize, the sleep stage tracking of the Nuqua app seems to be pretty accurate and on me it seems to be the best overall performer we're testing it against polysomnography. However, as we saw, there might be some person-to-person -person variation. Now, if you do decide to get a Polar Verity Sense, a Polar H10, Apple Watch, another device or anything at all on Amazon for that matter, even something as small as toilet paper. And at the same time you want to support the channel, there are different affiliate and non-affiliate links in the description below do not cost you any extra and some even provide a discount. Now, given that you watch this entire video on sleep tracking, you might also be interested in the devices I use myself on a daily basis for better sleep, which you can find right here in this video. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video.